Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this live presentation where we're going to be talking about MedLink as a platform that you may want to use in practice to help your patients and to help with information flow in your practice. And I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Lorenz Kemper, who's talking to us about MedLink itself. How are we doing, Lorenz? Yeah, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. No problems. So um, tell us about yourself briefly and then also let us know all about MedLink. Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm a GP, practicing GP in uh, Oxfordshire in a sort of semi-rural practice. Um, and uh, I'm a partner there as well. I'm also another GP trainer. And and yeah, um, Medlink has, has been around for the last uh, two years for us really. Um, and uh, through COVID has grown and there's been increased interest. So it's it's good to be able to, to be here today to tell people about it really. Thank you. And just to remind people that we are going live with this session, but if you are watching us on the replay, thank you for joining us. If you do want to ask any questions or anything about the platform, we're more than happy that we can try and answer those as we go along. But yeah, so show us more about Medlink itself then, shall we? Lance, do you want yeah, to bring sure. up the slides? Yeah, let me know if you can see it. Um, yeah. So the slides are up. You're on your way. Okay, fine. Well, I'll give you a quick uh, uh, demo to sort of give you an overview. Um, so, like I said, it was two years ago that this this all started, and, and the way um, uh, Medlink came about really is that uh, we we saw lots of digital solutions um, uh, for primary care, and uh, they were very helpful in the sort of urgent care setting and sort of dealing with problems on the day, you know, symptoms that a patient might develop. But really, what we wanted to uh, uh, have is something that helped with our routine workload, a sort of chronic disease management, which is is the majority of general practice really. Um, and uh, when we were looking, we couldn't really find anything out there. So I, I say we, that's that's my uh, business partner, Mark Widgery, um, who's in practice with me. And um, so what we found is that quite easily, we could uh, design some sort of online reviews ourselves. Um, and that, you know, the routine care, things like COAF is very structured, it's very safe. Um, mm -hmm. data gathering from patients. So it just lent itself to that. And so that's what we did. We tried to um, make some sort of engaging content for um, for asthma reviews, say, um, and sent it to our patients and it was really well received. So that, that that's how we used it in our practice. Now, that wasn't meddling. Um, meddling came about when, you know, every GP has a GP. Um, and so some of our patients were, you know, GP colleagues and 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 nurse colleagues that suddenly said, "This looks fantastic. Can 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 we have a go, please?" Mm -hmm. um, and really, that's how I was born. So um, you know, the next thing is that we you know um, set up a company, uh, Medlink Solutions, and um, it's it's you know particularly taking off during COVID as you'd expect. Um, some of the some of the you know clear things that we wanted to um, uh, aim for really is that it's routine work sort of very safe work um, that we tackle and that the practice remains in control of how that is managed. So not open the floodgates to any kind of um, any kind of demand um, mm -hmm. and that it's accessible, easily accessible to our patients. We didn't want to make it complicated and let the sort of, um, uh, you know, let, let any digital barriers appear. So Remote online reviews is, is what really we, we tackled. So through COVID, um, we've now spread right across the UK. Our system is um, integrates with any clinical system. So we're in Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland as well. Um, currently, 170 practices, um, but it's 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 daily growing, and it's uh, around 1.8 million patients that have access to it at the moment. So what I'd like to do in the presentation is just take you through this sort of patient-facing view. Um, talk a bit about engagement, the benefits to the practice as well, the feedback we've received. Uh, talk about the sort of costing um, and savings associated with Medlink and uh, give some sort of uh, sneak uh, previews and predictions of what gets to, what's yet to come. So in terms of the access that I mentioned, uh, we wanted to make this as easily accessible to patients as possible. We didn't want the patients to find that a digital solution is, is too complicated or a barrier. Um, so what it is, it's a simple URL um, that the patient can click on in order to access MedLink. It's the MedLink, if you like. So that can be shared with the patient in 
any kind of way that the practice currently uses. So everyone's got some text and communication tools. Um, I mean, clearly everyone pretty much has AccuRx at the moment. So mm -hmm. you can simply stick it into an AccuRx, but also you can use it in bulk messaging um, and this you know, free bulk messaging systems in place. We stick it on our letters. So we stick QR codes on our letters and patients do genuinely scan the QR codes and they recall letters saying, you know, your annual review is due. Um, scan this and you can start, uh, you can get started. Um, the option of email is obviously there, although not really widely used in general practice. Um, and you can make it available freely on the website as well. So each condition um, has a review and you can be selective about what you make available. For example, we put our update contact details meddling onto the website and patients can simply click on it and that way update any sort of phone numbers, for example. So that's how it's accessible. Let's um, talk about what we actually cover. I said at the beginning, we were quite sort of core focused, um, but really there's an, a lot of um, routine data gathering, you know, structured data gathering that we do in general practice. And a lot of that is not quaff. Um, so we've now um, incorporated things like the, you know, pill checks, HRT reviews, um, health checks. Um, and a lot of this has also been driven really by, by the practices that use Medlink requesting certain things such as you know epilepsy, anxiety, um, reviews, and such. We've we've also um, uh, built a multi-morbidity review, as we found that you know patients may be sent several of the metlinks depending on what their conditions are, and, and lots of these conditions don't come alone. Mm -hmm. So we've got a multi-morbidity medlink um, that incorporates asthma, COPD, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and shortly coronary heart disease and epilepsy as well, um, as well as including a, um, a medication review within that. So, it, you know, it's it's much better for the patients to be able to do all of that in one go. So that's what we cover in terms of what does it look like? So I've got a, a little sort of view from a smartphone. Uh, we're all familiar with, with the way that a sort of um, a text message now arrives um, and it loads straight away. Um, uh, you click on it and it loads in your browser in the native browser of your phone and um, and you're on your way. So it's got very much an interface like an app, and that's what's what it's often referred to. Patients are saying, "Oh, you know, the app works really well." It's mm -hmm. not an app; it just looks like an app. It's 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 simply browser based, which is which is what makes it so accessible. It it can be used on any device really, and um, so we haven't had anyone having any any trouble making it work anywhere. And and again, there isn't any download. Um, there isn't any login or password or username, and 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 that's the bit that really reaches out to the patients that need it the most, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. there, there is digital poverty, and that's you know a term that's sort of being used quite a lot. And I think it's sort of helpful in realizing that there are barriers to digital solutions. And what we found is that we, through the simplicity of the system, we're actually able to reach out to those patients. Question is, of course, so how do you identify someone? It's simply through their date of birth and name. And then it's also um, the MedLink knows which practice has sent it out. And through these factors, you're then able to identify the patients. So this is a, just a brief um, cut down version just to show you generally what it looks like. This isn't a, this is just a demo one, but um, it, you know, you can see that we've tried to make this engaging. We've got um, sort of colorful interface, we've got images, We'll have uh, videos. The videos are, again, shortened. They're not made um, long uh, and they're integral to the review so that the patient doesn't get directed elsewhere to another website. Um, and, and they can you know, acknowledge that they've seen this, which is particularly important for asthma and you know, post any questions as they like. Mm -hmm. um, it's, always, it's always important to get the balance right between um, giving a lot of content and actually losing engagement. So we've we've tried to be really mindful of um, how much content we share with we share with the patients and how much we ask them as well. So then the 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 real powerful thing at the end, if you like, is asking the patient of what they would like to happen next. So this is just their preference. It's not it's not you know a decision making tool, um, and the patient doesn't make the the final decision here. But they can give a preference of how they'd like this to be completed. Would they like this to be um, with uh, follow up from the practice, or are they happy for this to be done remotely? You know, this has been reworded through COVID because previously it says, "Would you like this face to face?" But that's not something that's being offered at the moment. 
but the patient can say, I'm happy with how things are. If you are happy, I'm going, I'm, I'm happy to complete this without, without further input from me. And uh, there's always the option to leave any sort of specific comments if they would like to. So then they submit and um, there's the option of signposting them elsewhere, such as the Asthma UK website. Um, active signposting is something that um, uh, can actually be customized to uh, localities um, if there's a bulk sign up and we get to talk to talk about that at the end really. So covering engagement, I, I talk about you know the, the sort of digital poverty and what you'd think perhaps at first is that this is clearly going to be a tool that's going to be used by the young. But um, what we found is that this is used by more people over the age of 50 than under the age of 50. And, and, and that's been fantastic because that's really the, you know, the, the, the patient group that, that needs to have these reviews. So it's, it's simplicity is paid off in that we are able to reach out those that really need it. The other thing about engagement is we've set ourselves um, at the very beginning, the most difficult task, if you like, by only contacting those asthmatics that haven't had a review in over two years. Um, okay. So the really unengaged patients, if you like. And out of those, through the system, we managed to get hold of 50% of them. So it's really beneficial for patient care um, uh, to have a system that's easy to use. So you know, you, you're managing to reach out the unengaged. Again, even further engagement, we've now, again, through COVID, um, we've managed to make use of medical students. So I don't know if you've got medical students, um, but you know they're not getting the same experience as they used to in general practice now. It's not the same, mm -hmm. you know, listening in on someone that's on the phone. Um, but through Medlink, we've managed to um, enable the, the medical students to run a review, if you like, that's very structured and safe. And they took a patient that, for example, hasn't got internet access through a MedLink. And that way the patient is, is, um, is getting some continued care um, and the student is getting some, some interaction. I say student, I mean, really, it could be anyone um, that does it because there's no clinical interpretation required. I guess that could potentially be um, a member of the practice team or care coordinators if we're looking at PCN kind of staffing and that kind of thing as well. Precisely, and I think, um, and we've we've seen, and you know, continue to see that in in the current climate, there's sudden sort of explosions of capacity. Say someone has got to self isolate; they're now at home, and they can't mm -hmm. actually do their usual work from home. Um, you know, say they need to scan paper; you can't do that from home. Mm -hmm. um, so, however, you can make them complete med links from home. Um, by calling up patients that haven't got internet access and suddenly you can actually enable your workforce to continue to do something that that prior to that they wouldn't have been able to do. And, you know, during when COVID, the first lockdown happened, everyone saw a huge change in nursing capacity. You know, mm -hmm. suddenly there was a huge, huge surge of that. Um, and, and with meddling, we were able to, you know, get a lot of our um, sort of chronic condition reviews done that way. Okay. So that's um, <clears throat> touching the engagement. What I want to do is sort of um, uh, look at what happens behind the scenes. So the typical workflow, if you like, for a MedLink is that it arrives at the practice, um, it gets attached to the record, um, the coding happens, clinician has a look at it, and then it's actioned. So when it comes back, we have made sure that we simplify it by having a single A4 sheet um, um, you know, I say paper, it's not really paper, is it? But it's a single A4 sheet um, that, 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 that um, gives you the information, it gives you the codes on the right, it gives you the um, free text on the left and the answers of the patient on the left. Um, and uh, it's, it, it's easy to read. I'll show you through uh, the various aspects of it. So for example, this is the asthma, you know, an asthma um, review. It gives you the control test the, in figures and where they scored and how they scored. Um, but also graphically shows, um, you know, on the scales um, where they are um, doing particularly well. Similarly, we've got all sorts of different scores, PHQ-9s and, um, you know, blood sugar scores and GAD-7s, et cetera. And we're always trying to um, have it visually represented as well. And then again, on the left, you have the answers from the patient. On the right, the 
corresponding codes. We highlight COF codes. Uh, you can see them in bold. Um, mm -hmm. So that practices can actually pick and choose, for example, um, if they only want to record certain things, then they can focus on those that, that if you like, um, um, are, are COF relevant. Um, patients also have um, uh, their free text responses. That's a different font for that to highlight that. You get a, in ASMA, you get a personalized act, action plan as well that can then be shared back with the patient and modified. At the very bottom of every review, uh, well, not every review, but the, the reviews where um, um, a clinician may need to interpret things further, the patient can give their um, uh, preference, as I said earlier, how they'd like it to complete it. You know whether they want to be having further contact from us or not. So then comes to coding, um, and this varies between obviously clin different clinical systems. We have an EMIS web template available um, that covers a single template that covers um, uh, every one of our reviews uh, to just sort of uh, make coding more easy. Again, it tells you which bits are the sort of cough codes uh, that are relevant um, and uh, which ones are not. So that's to make the coding quicker. In terms of system one, that's a lot easier. We supply scanning rules so that all the documents, if you like, can be coded automatically. The document gets read and all the codes are then allocated and you simply accept them. So for system one practices, that's that's a very swift process. It then comes to the clinicians. Now, I've mentioned the sort of preference of patients. So this is our um, uh, this is the the summary, if you like, of how patients usually respond. In fact, this is growing steadily with more and more uh, requests for it to be done remotely, understandably. Um, but uh, it, it's it's more as sort of eighty nine percent of patients requesting a, a, a review to be completed remotely. So that's their preference. Um, but what's the actual um, assessment from clinicians? And when we've certainly reviewed asthma. Um, the appropriate appropriateness of them to be completed uh, remotely is three quarters of them can. Um, so that, if you like, is the most powerful tool um, of Medlink in terms of releasing capacity. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the overall numbers of Medlinks coming in, two thirds of them can be completed without further action. And that, uh, that one third that remains doesn't need to necessarily be seen face to face in a 20 minute appointment. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the typical follow up is, um, you know, the typical review of a meddling is less than five minutes. And it's, it's typically a text or a phone call. And um, that suffices in terms of the, the follow up. But also you can you can really target those patients that need to have the follow up and you can make the time available for those to be seen. And, um, and 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 that that generates capacity. I, I keep going on about asthma because that's the the easiest one to sort of explain. But you know we do a vast amount of uh, medication reviews, and um, which releases clinician time, you know GP time typically. Um, but also we have reviews that don't require any clinician input at all. So, for example, blood pressure reviews that can be done from home. The patient would. Um, uh, um, submit their readings, it comes back to the practice with an average calculated. If that's within target, no follow-up is required. So so that there are there are clear efficiency savings there um, mm -hmm. for practices. Now, <clears throat> when I talk about control, um, so that's really, uh, as I mentioned before, that we don't um, open the floodgates to a new way into general practice, okay? So you are in charge of who you invite. So the, the practices remain in control of who gets invited to these reviews. And um, that is helpful in managing demand um, and your capacity. So I mentioned earlier that you might have a sudden surge of capacity with the nurses being available um, during lockdown. So what we did back then is we you know, sent out all the asthma reviews out to the patients because asthma was, was an, is a risk factor, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. and the we get very anxious. I mean, I'm sure you remember that um, everyone wanted to have an inhaler. Even, even Absolutely. Yeah, that was a challenge <laughs> in the heart. Yes, exactly. Um, so, so the patients were really appreciative when they suddenly got an invitation to have their sort of asthma reviewed and then nurses to get back to them with, with mm -hmm. an assessment, assessment of it. Um, so it, 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 
it, that's that's during COVID, but you know, during you know normal times uh, when we also have fluctuations of say winter pressures and sort of just quaff deadlines coming up, and um, there is fluctuation in when people are available, and you can really front load the system. Um, for example, by sending out blood pressure reviews when there is capacity to act and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the control through invitations. Response times is about what do the patients get told once they've completed one of these reviews? So we're not saying we'll get back to you within 48 hours. There's nothing promised. Okay, This is because typically these are all routine reviews. Patients do them once a year. They haven't got any uh, any new symptoms. You know, this isn't urgent care. This is routine care. So the patients um, are told that this isn't, an, you know, uh, if you have any urgent problems, don't use this as a way to communicate with the practice. When mm -hmm. they've got it completed, they're told we'll get back to you. Okay, there isn't any any actual time, and that makes it hugely flexible for the practice. So you can you you consequently have more task-based uh, workload as opposed to appointment-based workload. And okay. the, the benefits of that, again, you might have um, someone that's self-isolating and, um, uh, and and they would easily be able to um, work through all the metalinks from home, say, you know, our nurse has to shield and uh, consequently she'd be able to complete all of that work from home. So you can work remotely, you can work flexibly. We've, we, for example, had... Um, uh, two nurses work side by side, um, and uh, one of them was just running a routine clinic. Uh, the other one uh, had some time dedicated to do MedLink. Um, now, the one that needed to do the clinic fell sick, and uh, you know no normally we would have had to cancel that entire clinic, but because these patients are not expecting a response there at that moment, and it's not um, appointment based, uh, the nurse was simply able to, you know, take over that clinic, and the, the patients didn't need to be sent away or, you know, uh, inconvenienced mm -hmm. in any way. You were able to continue, so it's it gives you flexibility. Cool. Uh, as well as um, that, there's also the streamlining of your processes. So you can be sure that the right member of the team is going to be dealing with that medical problem, with that med with that medical review. So rather than having the the issue sometimes where um, you know a patient sees the most skilled nurse say for you know their simple dressing, that isn't going to happen with this. You can uh, you can we we supply a worksheet that uh, allows the practice to streamline where each of these reviews goes. So you can be sure that the most skilled member of the team deals with the most appropriate review. You can make sure that you. Uh, make use of your pharmacist in the best possible way by sending all the medication reviews to them. Or, you know, if you have mental health workers, then the mental health reviews go, go to them. So you can really um, make sure that the right member of the team deals with the right uh, with the right work. So, I mean, in summary, really, you, you retain control of your workload. Cool. Um, so we have various um, quality um, features. This is a is a uh, um, view of our Medlink manager. So this, if you like, is the dashboard that control uh, the way you can see how um, everything is is managed. How many patients have done each individual review? What the ages were? Um, what their uh, preferred whether they preferred a remote review or not? Uh, whether they recommended the system? Um, so this is uh, uh, each practice has that available to themselves. Uh, PC you know, there is the function of actually having access to several practices. If a PCN wanted to adopt that or a CCG, then they can um, have access to various different practices and have an overview of this. This is this is rapidly growing, if you like, um, in terms of its functionality, um, and this is this is sort of an early on screenshot of what it looks like. The installation guide is a simple step-by-step -step process of how you get MedLink into your practice. Um, it it uh, talks through the various different um, uh, um, aspects of incorporating it. And we've really tried to minimize system change. Okay, we didn't, there, there isn't any new software you need to download um, and you don't have to make major changes. What we really wanted to do, because I think everyone is getting a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of new things that we need to deal with. 
So we really want to integrate into it in a smooth and simple way. And we've tried to make that as easy as possible for practice managers. And we've got a whole support package that sort of tells you how you can do it. Um, also familiarization emails so that you can inform your team members as of what is Medlink and what's your role in it. So we've really tried to make it as easy as possible. I mentioned safety and I mentioned that this is all routine work. Um, so we have built-in safety features. So if you've got a blood pressure reading that's you know um, in the uh, malignant hypertension range, the, that isn't going to come back to the practice. The patient is going to be informed there and then that that's outside the safe range and that really they'd need to um, uh, contact the practice in the usual way. So it says here, wrong format because they might have mistyped it or outside safe range. Um, at the beginning of each review, it tells them what to do if that, if that alert comes up. We've got um, uh, average blood pressures being calculated by the system. So I don't know about you, but uh, we used that used to be a task done by people by hand or manually, yeah. um, which uh, ultimately did lead to errors, um, mm -hmm. human errors. So you can try and elude that um, by being automated. Uh, blood sugars, uh, again, same applies. PHQ-9 scores, again, it's visually demonstrated where patient scores GAD7, we've got other scores as well. Cool. Um, at the uh, end of it, um, you can signpost your patients as well. So you can really um, actively signpost them, pulmonary rehab, weight loss services, diabetes education services. Um, it's a powerful tool to really um, tailor it to, to your patient population. OK. Yeah, um, I guess just with that signposting, yeah. is that determined centrally? Or is that something you can tailor locally? Yeah, so that's something we can tailor locally. Um, so I'll, I'll come back onto that um, uh, later on when we talk about the pricing of things. Sure. Um, feedback. So we've had, um, we, you know, we collect feedback from the patients. All the feedback is available to each practice um, in the manager. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the patients really like the simplicity of it. They've really liked the fact that, um, you know, routine care can continue. Can, you know, that you can do that remotely, that it's intuitive, and that it's not a, a very lengthy sort of tick boxy exercise that they've described as very caring in a way. Um, and similarly, you know, the practices, I mean, lot, all of this is available on our website, really. Um, but practices have really seen the benefit of this, uh, particularly in, in, in the last year. Um, we ask at every review, whether the patient would recommend this to their family and friends, and you know, we're proud to say that it's it's a ninety percent recommendation rate. This is feedback from patients, so patients really find this a good system to use and continue to do so. So, in terms of pricing, um, we are running a free trial. Um, so we we did a free trial um, available through COVID. So that's three months. There's no obligation. Um, you can um, express your interest on our website, and uh, we can very quickly get the ball rolling for the practice um, to to start making use of it. We also have a calculator on the website that I'd encourage people to have a look at. What well, the calculator does. It lets you work out what the estimated savings are from asthma alone and what your revenue would be um, through the obesity register. Um, you put in your practice, you put in what your appointment times are, you put in what you know pay scales your nurses are, and it lets you calculate that um, uh, this doesn't really cost you. You save money this way and you generate money this way. Um, I mean, this is, this is uh, when I talk about the obesity register, um, the quaff registers in the UK are that 20% of the population would be obese when, in fact, it is um, at least 30%. Um, and through a single campaign, which doesn't involve any clinician input, you can collect that data from, from your population um, with Medlink. And not just that, you can actually appropriately refer them to relevant services as well. Like you just asked about whether you can tailor um, weight loss services to your locality. Yes, you can do that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's, that's then not just a sort of, oh, here's the national weight loss advice, you know, eat less of this. This is actually, you no, know, you can contact, you know, uh, go to the village hall on Saturdays and you can get support there. So this is, this is much more beneficial to, to patients that way. 
We do offer discounts, and that's uh, discounts when, uh, um, when when you get it on bulk or when you get it for several years. Um, and there's referral schemes that allow practices to get additional free months to referring other practices. But ultimately, what we've done is we've we've priced it at 10p per patient um, in the practice, um, which which you know is is very competitively priced as a system. Mm -hmm. Quick thing about the bulk uh, sign up. I mentioned that you can get discounts, and, and really, when we say bulk, it's it's sort of anything really over thirty thousand patients. Um, so typically the PCNs, um, but also CCGs, and we've got um, uh, Scottish health boards that are also signing up um, to get customized content. So why would you want to customize it? I mean, it's like I say, you can engage your patients, you can target, yeah, um, you can, you can tailor it to your population's health needs. Um, and also you can signpost to services that you have commissioned already locally um, to really um, um, have everything uh, dealt with more appropriately. So lastly, in terms of what's yet to, what's yet to come, uh, well, as, you know, as we said earlier, at the same same time as I'm talking now, there's the webinar on the on the COVID vaccine, and mm -hmm. I think what what we'd see uh, meddling through on the COVID vaccine uh, is something that we've previously done for the flu vaccine, um, uh, which is really allowing consent from patients. I think with the COVID vaccine, it's not like the flu. Um, I can't talk about, I, I, I don't feel confident uh, uh, talking about that now without having any knowledge about it. Um, mm -hmm. To a patient say, I can't say what you know the typical side effects are, etc. So I think consent is going to be a big issue. And I think uh, what Medling would be able to do is, is share all the information with patients beforehand and allow patients to indicate what their preference and whether they you know uh, do consent to this or not. So I think that's one of the things that it's um, we'll be able to do, uh, and we're just really waiting on on the uh, uh, leaflets for that to be made available. Mm -hmm. There's um, some metrics that we'll uh, make available to all of our existing customers, um, and that's uh, about how uh, how much time is actually saved through Medlink, and they're able to put in um, who typically deals with these reviews at the moment. So, um, you know, is it your GP or is it your pharmacist? Um, how much time do they typically spend on that? And we can then really feed back to the practice uh, what exact time, uh, amount of time, uh, and for which professional that they've saved. So that's that's coming shortly in the next few weeks. And lastly, there's always the question about coding. So mm -hmm. the coding question, I think, is, is, uh, uh, is something that we get asked a lot. <clears throat> um, and I think... Um, it arises really through uh, AccuRx uh, coding back into the record directly, which is not something that um, Medlink does, um, not directly, certainly the way AccuRx does. Um, and I guess there's two reasons for that, because we would need to sacrifice one of two things in order to do that. One is being an accessible system for um, patients. So you, you can have systems um, that would record back into the record, but typically require login details from patients. Um, and we really didn't want to do that because it would be a barrier for um, for some of the patients to, you know, have this sort of username and password experience, which really, as soon as you introduce that into a sort of an online tool, you will get a dropout rate. And that's mm -hmm. what we don't want. And the second barrier is um, that the way AccuRx does it is uh, works, you know, remarkably well, and I think everyone is 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 keen on using that. Um, it does create a new inbox for doctors and nurses, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what uh, we want to steer away from. Um, I think it's it's it can be difficult to manage that and 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 put you know safety mechanisms in place if we continue to add new ways into general practice. And I think what we wanted to do is we wanted to stick with the existing systems that are in place. And so that's that's that that's why we're steering away from that kind of um, integrated coding. However, there are solutions out there, um, and that really um, is the new document manager software uh, uh, that's coming out. 
Um, so we're in discussion with Docman, and they're introducing essentially what is a, a, a better OCR scan of documents. So OCR scan is this, it's similar to what the scanning rules and system one are doing. They read the document, mm -hmm. pick out the codes, you click go, and it's in. And Emus Web is is um, has promised that they'll release their new uh, document manager uh, early next year. So by that time, you'd be able to automatically code everything that comes back anyway, without having to have a new inbox, um, a new inbox in your system. So we want to reduce system change. Cool. So that's what's on the horizon, and that's what really brings it to the end of the discussion. Cool. And demo for that. And thank you for that. It's been really interesting. Um, I know that I've got a couple of questions, and I can see we've also got some in the chat as well. So how about we go to those first of all, yeah. if that's all right? Yeah, sure. Um, so we've got Assad, who's asked the question, um, have you thought about how patients who struggle to read English may be able to use this solution, i.e. involving family members and stuff? So um, can you give us an idea? I, I guess to me that talks about proxy access a little bit. Yeah, uh, we've looked at that, and we have had that question before. Um, we've we've had a look at ways of of having some sort of translation of the forms, but that's been very difficult, and it's not something that we could easily do. Um, I've mentioned earlier um, that yes, you can have um, involving family members, um, mm -hmm. so that that being essentially you, you talk someone through it. However involving a family member you can't be sure about the you know we wouldn't be able to take on the responsibility that what is being translated is being translated accurately um mm -hmm. so it's uh, we have we have faced barriers that way um, um and and but you know we, we're continuing to look at what the solutions are um and you know what add-ons there are for us to make use of to 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 get some translated content but i don't think that this uh, i think this is this the solution I would see for that is I would class that as some tailored content. So if, mm -hmm. if for example, if BCG said we have a you know a large community that speaks this language, um, are you able to create content that we can send out to these patients? Then that's something that we can do. Um, mm -hmm. But we can't easily make that happen um, in, in, in terms of the you know the the, the routine middling use. So that's something that would, would need to be um, commission but but certainly you know i think the possibility is there yes sure i guess the other cohort that i would probably see potentially where the proxy access may also be quite useful is with the learning disabled patients and potentially learning disability reviews may be something that could work quite well if that information could be pre-gleaned um, prior to contact for their physical um, appointment that they would have uh, i mean that may be somewhere to explore a bit further possibly yeah, so we've we've got we've got um, learning disability health checks um, ready. It's been more of a capacity assessment issue that one has to tread very carefully. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 a very vulnerable group of patients, um, and um, we are. I mean, we're getting advice on that, sort of more legal advice on if if that is appropriate to to do. Um, I think. Um, likely it would be, uh, it's not appropriate to do for the patients themselves to fill it out alone. But I think mm -hmm. it's something that, yes, like you say, sort of proxy access, that's what we'd very much like to do. And I mean, the the, the big focus, uh, certainly for this year from NHS England, is to support these patient groups because of the, the you know, the, the poor health outcomes. Despite it already having been a big push in previous years, it continues to be a vulnerable group and continues to be a group with poor health outcomes. So we really would like to um, uh, would like to engage them, um, but it has to be done in a sort of safe way, and it has to be done um, that we we don't accidentally collect information from someone that doesn't have capacity. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think that's the that's the big thing. But we are um, we, we we already have content available. Um, I think it's it's just that we want to be uh, be sure that we are compliant in the way we we are running it. And I've, I envisage this to be available within the next few months, and um, once we have the advice back on how to best do that. Awesome, cool. Um, have you got any plans to expand into things like pre-screening uh, workload? Um, particularly, obviously, the PCN does is focus on cancer screening as well as um, in a year or so the cardiovascular screening. Um, I know a lot of this is focused more around 
established chronic conditions, but I guess that's a potential area as well to see expansion. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, that that would be very standard data gathering. Um, yes, I think that's something um, that we not that something that we're working on right now, um, but there's clearly an opportunity there, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's that, that would easily be done. Um, Pre-screening it made me think of um, the, one of the latest uh, uses of meddling that um, we are using. It's this pre-screening prior to a COVID vaccine um, that's being trialed uh, locally in Oxfordshire. Um, so we, we, we've developed a pre-screening questionnaire, for example, in that use. So that's research um, that meddling is being used for. It's a, it's a different different avenue, again, that we're, uh, we're exploring because it isn't... I don't, um, it's not that it's a rapidly new invention here. What mm -hmm. we've done is we've come up with a system that's simple to use for both patients and practices, and that doesn't require a huge turnaround of their current systems. And I think you, your texting tools have been around for a long time, yet AccureX this year has you know grown and helped patients and practices um, you know, across the country, and I think it's 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 that sort of change the way you work, as opposed to come up with a completely new invention, that I think is what made meddling so successful. And I think mm -hmm. um, um, the applications of that are really broad and wide. Sure. And I guess speaking of different technologies to use, one of the ones that I really got interested there about was your QR code use in letters yeah. i mean I, I must admit i've not come across a company that has done similar so far uh, i mean how how is the uptake of that going because potentially reaching those patients that don't normally have regular phone contact with a practice so working in a, in a city area we have many patients who change their phone numbers on a regular basis so sending them text messages even could be a challenge but yeah the, the qr code one was an interesting one yeah, so we've got um, two QR codes on every letter that we send out. One is just their review, and the other one is actually their contact details because they do change all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's it. The the one memorable uh, instance was when we had a a lady in her nineties with rheumatoid arthritis um, that you know took out her tablet. So she doesn't have a mobile phone. But she just pointed the camera at this QR code. So we have little instructions that are, um, uh, we give to the practices, and they essentially just bolt that footer to their letters. Um, mm -hmm. and it tells the patient what to do. And they say, hold the camera here, and your device will read it. And, and they followed that instruction. And lo and behold, they started their rheumatoid arthritis <laughs> review. Um, so it does actually get used. I mean, I often see them and think you would make use of that. But I'm surprised at the uptake of that. And um, I suppose mm -hmm. it's easier than typing in lots of, you know, digits and num and yeah. um, uh, letters into into a browser. So it's 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 very easy easy um, uh, for the practice to put them in their letters and the patients to use it. Absolutely. And I guess my final question I had was um, obviously you mentioned about your integration with EMIS and System One. Yeah. Is there any plans to expand into any of the other clinical systems like Vision, for example? So we, uh, I mean, in terms of in it's it's used with vision. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of integration, um, we've we've looked at it, but with with some of them came the drawback of having to have NHS login criteria, and that's that's again the barrier that we wanted to avoid because okay. um, those elderly patients uh, and you know patients uh, with certain health, you know, the the ones with the health needs. Um, are often the unengaged. And I think if we add barriers such as usernames, logins, downloads, um, we felt there was a barrier. But that's not to say that um, uh, these practices are using Docman. Um, and Docman practices will have the ability to, uh, in future, sort of have the documents, uh, have the meddlings read and the codes added automatically. So um, that way around, it can be integrated. Cool. Thank you for that, Lawrence. Um, I've really enjoyed hearing the presentation and really yeah, interested to see 
and, and hear about how MedLink can be useful for our, our patients and stuff, particularly, like I said, that QR code one that, that got me really excited um, in terms of how that could be used um, in terms of accessing um, and increasing accessibility for our patients and things. Um, I, I guess if people do want to obviously contact you, um, I'll put them back up. We've got the contact details for MedLink if people are interested in having a look at the, the product. And, and you mentioned that obviously at the moment you've still got a free trial because of COVID in terms of practice being able to have a look and, and experience the platform. That's still correct isn't it yeah that's still up and running and we have all of our content available on the website so every review can be looked at from the patient's perspective and the practice summary you can have a look at that on the website it's completely transparent um everything you need to know you can find there Thank you. And if anyone's got any comments or questions, just feel free to stick them down below in the chat and stuff. I'll also put some links into the show notes as well so you can access that information directly. And as always, EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patients time by taking hands in your primary care and learning. And we'll catch you in the next episode.